Lung Transplant First, let me know what is respiration. The respiratory system is made up of organs that help us breathe. Respiration is the term used to describe the exchange of oxygen from the environment for carbon dioxide from the body's cells. The process of breathing air into the lungs is called inhalation, and the process of breathing it out is called exhalation. Let no respiratory system consist of. The respiratory system includes the nose and nasal cavity, which perform a number of important functions, such as providing us with a sense of smell, warming and moistening the air we breathe in, filtering out irritants such as dust, and assisting us in the development of sound. The throat, also known as the pharynx, is a tube that carries air from the nasal cavity through the voice box, otherwise known as the larynx, down into the windpipe or trachea. The windpipe then splits into two breathing tubes, which carry the air into the lungs. These breathing tubes are called the bronchi, which extend into the bronchioli. The breathing tubes branch out many times throughout the lungs, until they eventually form tiny thin-walled air sacs or alveoli. The respiratory system does two very important things. It brings oxygen into our body, which we need for our cells to live and function properly. And secondly, it allows us to exhale carbon dioxide from our body. Carbon dioxide is the waste gas that is produced as a part of the body's energy making process. As Let know how many types of lung transplants. 1. A single lung transplant. 2. A double lung transplant. 3. A heart lung transplant. 4. A lobe transplant. Let know how surgery will be done. Immediately before transplant, we will do a few last minute tests and you will receive anti-rejection medications and antibiotics. There is a chance that the surgery will be cancelled at the last moment as the team is assessing the donor lungs right up to the moments before the surgery. In the operating room, you will be given medication to keep you unconscious. Several tubes are inserted into your body including an endotracheal tube, which is a breathing tube that extends from your mouth into the lungs, an intravenous line in your neck, a nasogastric or NG tube that goes into your stomach through your nose, and a urinary catheter that drains urine freely into a bag. The surgery itself can take six or more hours, depending on your condition and whether you have a double or a single lung transplant. Some people need to have their lung or heart function supported by machines before, during, or after the surgery. Your chest will be opened between the ribs, in the front across the breastbone, or at the side. The diseased lungs will be removed and replaced with the donor lungs one at a time. The new lung will be connected to the main bronchus, the pulmonary artery, and the pulmonary vein. After the lung is connected, the surgeons will leave drainage tubes around the lungs and heart and carefully close the layers of bone, muscle, and skin. After the surgery, you will be taken to the Intensive Care Unit, or ICU. You will remain there until you can breathe without the help of the ventilator or breathing machine, and until your condition is stable. In the ICU, you will be on a monitor that shows your heart rate, blood pressure, and other vital signs to the team at all times. The endotracheal or breathing tube, intravenous, chest tubes, nasogastric tube, and urinary catheter will be removed as your condition improves. If you still require the ventilator to breathe after about a week, you may need to have a temporary tracheostomy tube inserted through your neck into your trachea. The tracheostomy will make you feel more comfortable and help you to get strong enough to breathe without the ventilator and will make it easier to clear mucus from your lungs.
the staph will be able to suction mucus from your lungs through the endotracheal or tracheostomy tubes. Once you are well enough to leave the ICU, you will be moved to the acute care unit or ACU and then to the regular care unit. Most people stay in hospital for about 10 days to a few weeks after receiving a lung transplant, while others may have a longer stay. You will be given anti-rejection and anti-infection medications to ensure that your lungs work well. You will also receive medications for other conditions that you might have, such as pain. Pain should improve over time and pain control is a priority because you must participate in physiotherapy after the transplant to gain strength and avoid other complications. For each clinic visit, you must have blood work, a chest x-ray, and a pulmonary function test. Bronchoscopies and CT scans of the chest will also be done at longer intervals. To be continued. Do check out my video and subscribe to my channel. I would like to hear your feedback. Give support to me by subscribe my YouTube channel.